This is Wampire back again with Mr. Pedro. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Today we're going to talk about this movie yet again on my channel. We've we've talked about this movie again and again, and uh, this time it's a little bit extra special because Mr. Pedro has actually trained in the martial arts style that was used in this movie. Now, uh, this movie features FMA and uh, Sensei Rake and, and myself, we've, we've trained in FMA, but it's a specific style of FMA called Sayak Kali, and uh, Mr. Pedro has some background in it, which uh, definitely want to get in, into that. So, I mean, you guys watch this movie and you go, I want to learn what they're doing. You know, we can kind of see from Mr. Pedro's perspective, from his experience, he could share with us, you know, what that was like, what was the training like and, and all that. But first of all, let me ask you, um, do you like the movie? It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I do like it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've seen it. The first time I saw it, I think I was in high school, high probably school. like a junior or senior. And uh, I was captivated by it. I, I was captivated by it. I'm like, okay, these martial arts are cool, man. Like, they're knife fighting. They're doing all these cool movements. Um, and so, you know, I, I saw it. I tried to mimic it on my own <laughs> back then. <laughs> uh, it was probably my first sort of introduction to gunting or defanging the snake. Um, but, yeah, I remember I uh, saw it back then, and then I, I read it we saw it, rediscovered it uh, later on in life. Okay. And uh, when I understood uh, that it was FMA and that it was Sayoc, uh Kali, I was like, well, okay, this is really cool, man. Now I know uh, I have a name to the system, you know. Uh, I'll probably be able to uh, uh, seek it out then. And, and uh, luckily enough, I, I did find it uh, uh, where I live. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'd highly recommend it to everybody. Uh, it's a really entertaining movie. Benicio del Toro and uh, Tommy Lee Jones did a really good job in that movie. Yes, top top notch actors. Absolutely. Now, the the thing about this movie, the story wise, to me, is kind of like um, it's like Rambo, but mm -hmm. darker. Oh yeah, it's um, Ra Rambo's evil. <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, yeah, it, it's from the other the other side. You know what I mean? Like the other perspective. Yes, I I mean Rambo obviously suffered PTSD. Um, so does Benicio's character, except this time, um, he's more a little bit like a serial killer, and yeah. he actually battles the equivalent of the Colonel Troutman character which is played by Tommy Lee Jones so they actually battle which is mm -hmm. you don't get to see that in the in the Rambo movie but in this one they go head to head repeatedly oh yeah probably a good uh, what three or four times if I remember correctly yeah like three good times at least it was it's like uh, King Kong versus Godzilla right it's <laughs> Totally, yeah. It's an epic showdown because it's uh, the pupil versus the master. Yes. Now, this isn't the first time FMA has been featured in a Hollywood film, um, but I have to say that even though Filipino martial arts is commonly used in a lot of movies all over Hollywood, TV shows, movies, everywhere, but there, a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, I... I... I don't think they get highlighted enough. Um, and two, it's probably because I think they blend it with a lot of stuff. Like when we look at the Bourne movies, yes. there's a lot of FMA in there, but there's also some Muay Thai, some boxing, other styles there too, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, we're like John Wick, you know? I think John Wick too had the, the knife the knife work with a common, I think, if I remember correctly. Okay. But again, there's a lot of judo, jiu-jitsu mixed in there. Um, one of the movies, top of my head, that I can think of that was highlighted FMA, but it was real fantastical, was Equilibrium. Mm. Yeah. With, um, Great movie, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. And yes. they, were, they were doing it with guns, so they're doing like Huba with guns and... You know, that's, uh, you know, it's, 
that's o- kind of funky. But over the top, yeah. <laughs> over the top, but yeah, I mean, uh, Kick-Ass, the superhero movie. He uses two it, sticks, right. Two sticks, yeah. Right. And I remember in the first one, uh, the little girl, she has a balisong, the butterfly knife. Exactly. And she's twirling it around. She's kind of giving a little explanation on it. So you see it here and there. Uh, but, you know, it, I, I can't think of anyone who's just specifically, hey, this is FMA. And- th- this is the only one, I think. And even this movie, it's actually divided into two, which is the tracker, the Tom Brown Jr., the, the tracking stuff, and then there's the <laughs> FMA. So, But this is the one, I, I think, that gets the most, like like you're saying, highlight as far as FMA goes. And there's nothing else. So if you hate this movie but you love FMA, I, I'm sorry to say I think this is this is it. There's nothing else out there un, unless they make something, which I hope they do. Mm-hmm. I do too. I mean, I remember uh, you remember Lucy Liu. Yeah. She she had some FMA training, and I've seen some clips of her doing some double sticks in a Wally Heaven Six in movies. X versus Sever. Against Antonio Banderas, I believe she was an assassin in that, right? Mm-hmm. And then, of yeah. course, Mila Jovovich in uh, Resident Evil, she had a screamer training there. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, Filipino systems—they they look really good on camera. Mm. Um, but uh, like I said, there's just—I I guess probably maybe because of the stuntmen or the choreographers, they never just train one thing, so they're gonna throw in a lot of stuff. Well, dude, you, you're the guy that saw this movie and said, I'm going to go learn that style, and, and you did. So uh, what can you tell us, like, compared to other FMA styles, how is it different? Because you've done other FMA styles to more conventional. Definitely. So the biggest thing for me was, so Psylocke is taught by templates, so in the movie The Hunted, they're using the three of nine template. It's the classical Psyoc template. Uh, and I think they only show the first six moves of the template. And so you learn the attacker side, the guy who has the knife, the feeder, and then you learn the defender side, the empty hand defender. And so the guy with the knife is feeding and the guy is defending and there's a lot of cross hand tapping. In that system, so there's a lot of tapping and clearing. Okay. Um, so you learn both sides, and then you're like, okay, I'm getting good at this, but then there's a different version of it, right? So you learn the right handed version, now you gotta learn the left handed version. Yes. Nine angles, but different order. And then you learn that tapping system, and then it builds upon that where it's like, okay, left defeats right. And then, you know, right defeats left and just off of one template there's a whole lot of application all right there and uh you know as you go on through the system they have a pontatukan set or several and uh it's really the pontatukan set is really like wing chun or jkd with a knife there's about 12 moves in the first set and so like the first one is you have the knife the other guy has his hands up you clear, like you pox out his lead hand, then you jab him with the knife. That's your move number one. Move number two, you pox out, he checks, you do a double pock, jab him with the knife. So on and so forth. There's a lot of clearing, um, but you're doing it with a knife. Think Wing Chun, JKD trapping with a knife. Right. For the Pontatukan. And then, like I said, there's a bunch of other templates, like the transition drill templates. I remember uh, doing transition drill one and two whole another set of angles, whole another way of clearing and tapping. Uh, there was a couple of karambit ones. I forget the names. Um, and so again, same thing. So you learn the angles, learn the tapping, the clearing, and you work it. So it's almost like another way to look at it that I thought of it is um, doing like a kata from karate or, or kung fu but you learn one part the other person learns the other part and you do it together okay um so it's so, a partner drill but it's it is a, a format so it is a pattern that you guys are it, repeating 
would, you're learning a lot of patterns. So would you say that, um, okay, so let me go into the pros and cons of, of the style that you notice. So uh, a conventional FMA, we do a lot of stick work. Mm -hmm. So in this style, I, I remember you telling me you guys didn't do a whole lot of stick. So would that be one of the pros for you? Yeah, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> it's 50-50. I mean, if you're only looking for a knife, then definitely it's a pro. But it's a con because in that you actually gain a lot of attributes from the stick. And the stick is a... Can it can be lethal, but for the most part, it's non-lethal, right? Like you, maybe you do a redondo or some kind of wittick to like somebody's hand, and they drop the weapon, and that's pretty much it. But with a knife, it's much more commitment because you're cutting them, you're lacerating them. Uh, they start to bleed. It, you know, authorities get involved. It's uh, <laughs> probably looks a little bit worse, but. Uh, um, there's a lot of good in uh, in Psyoc. Uh, your your reflexes will definitely get better because even just doing a simple cross hand tapping drill, so you'll get fed an angle one and like an angle two stab or slash, and then you, your job is to cross hand tap. So you start moving, moving, and then from there they start clearing, and you got to block, tap, keep tapping, and so there's a lot of reflex building in those mm -hmm. drills. A con for me personally um, is that you have to learn a lot of patterns, right? So three of nine, you learn nine angles, right hand side, right, boom, boom, boom. And then you got to learn another nine on the left hand side. So that's what, 18? And that's just one template. Like there's a whole bunch of other templates, you know, and... Uh, I don't know, man. I'm not very smart. It's hard for me to <laughs> memorize all that. But, you know, you take notes and, and uh, you know, you just go back to them. But that's one thing. I mean, most FMA systems, okay, this is your uh, your abecedario, your 1 through 12 or 1 through 14 or however many you use. And you work off of that, you know? Right. Stick, knife, empty hand. There might be some variants here and there, maybe some mini templates. But, uh, no, with Sioc is uh, you're learning a whole bunch of templates. So if you ever do Sioc, take a notebook. Okay. Take plenty of notes. Make drawings. Trust me, you're gonna need them. <laughs> but when you were there in the class, and we just spoke about this earlier before we started recording, like the first time I took a BJJ class, and for me it was like I am doing the positions that I saw in the UFC. This is insane. Like I was like super excited. So for you to be in the Sayak class and you're doing these cuts and stuff and, and they they probably have all kinds of names for the different cuts. Mm -hmm. How was that? Like, just like in the movie where he's going, you know, long heart, you know, uh, femoral, femoral, you know, stuff like that. He's calling out the, the thing, you know, the order yeah, to uh, no. Benicio and, and you going at, going through that. I mean, that must've blew your mind. Oh, dude, totally. I had the same feeling, too. Um, I'm like, oh, man, this is from the movie. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was just fun. It's a fun system to train. Mm. Um, and so you start like three of nine. Okay. External jugular, internal jugular, blue worm, domino aorta, perineum, brachial punch, the mandible angle, femoral heart thrust, middle thyroid. <laughs> You learn all that, and you're like, oh, yeah, right on, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> same, same thing. Um, I'm doing it. I'm doing the tapping, and I'm like, man, this is what I was looking for in FMA, you know, because this is what I've always seen. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I found it, and I was doing it, and it was, it was really good. Like, I was really happy. I was having a lot of fun. Nice, nice. I mean, how cool is that? So... The next thing I got to get into is is also a big part of this movie is the knife. The Tom Brown Jr., the um, WSK, the Wilderness Survival Knife that's in the movie. Um, so, so that's the thing. That knife 
is not an FMA knife. It is the tracker knife. It's a wilderness survival knife. What do you think of the knife? I thought it looked cool. Um, I think, to me, it looks like it's more for hacking. Like, it's not, it doesn't really look like a stabber to me. Because didn't it only have, like, one inch? Do I remember correctly? Or did it have a false edge on the back? Um, oh, boy. It had a sawback, didn't it? Yeah, I think so. I thought it had a saw on the back. So then it probably is single-edged, not double. Single-edged. I could be wrong. Yeah. It might be partially double-edged and then goes into the saw back. I, I don't have one, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> um, so I like it. I think it's it leaves a big, nasty wound. It looks like it's got a lot of weight behind it. Yes. Um. But for me, I, I, I like I like two edges, even if it's a false edge, because I find that thrusting is, is natural to us humans. You, you you watch knife fighting videos, real knife fighting videos. It's either uh, a uh, ice pick grip, or they're like this. But either way, they're stabbing, stabbing this way, and. Uh, so I, I like having the two edges. I, I think it just makes for easier penetration. Um, but overall, I mean, it's a cool knife. You know what I mean? Like I said, it probably uh, it's got some good weight. It looks like it has good weight behind it. So when you're doing your angle ones or your angle twos, probably get a big nasty cut in there. Yeah. Now uh, this is just my own thoughts, but I'm thinking, you know, in FMA, uh, it's like why don't they use an FMA knife? And then the question is, what is an FMA knife? And I believe the problem is we don't really have an FMA knife. And because I think our the FMA knife is this guy. Yeah. Right? But this is illegal all over the world now. So because of that, now we don't have a knife. If, if this became our knife, I mean, what good is it? Because it's illegal in a lot of different places. So then we are knife less. And I think that's why they went with that knife rather than, um, for me, this is my FMA knife because, you know, it was designed by Professor Bram Frank, who is the inheritor of modern RNS. So, I mean, you know, this, <laughs> I don't know how much more FMA you can get. So right, right. I'm surprised they didn't contact him for, for the movie. Um, yeah, I mean, I wonder how much of that has to do with um, them. I mean, them just having uh, the Psyox there and just kind of only wanting to get their input, maybe, uh, like the film people. I, Yeah, I mean, they were the technical advisors for uh, the knife choreography, right? The knife fighting mm -hmm. choreography. They, they were the guys that worked on the film in fact aren't they isn't one of them in the film that uh, Benny is <laughs> demonstrating on yeah yeah that's one of the fellas or um the practice where tommy lee jones is calling out and and he's uh removing the guy's gun and choking him with, with the strap yeah yeah so i've seen one of the knives I want to say it's called the Rat R A T, and it's a tiny little thing. It's okay. kind of like a I think you wear it on your belt, and you draw, and you immediately go for like a neck cut or stab. Did you saw this at the Psyoc class that you were taking, or? Yeah, yeah. My teacher had one. There's a training version and a live version. Okay. And so I remember it's kind of like a cross draw. Okay. So you lift, you draw, and then you just you can conceal it with the finger. So it'd be like a quick jab to the neck. Um, but it was, it was a small thing. But it, you know what? Now I think about it, it kind of looked like a kitchen knife. Okay. It looked like a kitchen knife, but kitchen knives are kind of big. So it, it was like a small kitchen knife? A, a small miniaturized version. Okay. I see. So it's, it's very simple looking is what you mean, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, it was very simple looking. Huh. I, I want to say it's called the rat. R.A.T., but I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that one. Okay. So, yeah, the, the, it was a little bit strange that they went with that, that knife, but the FMA mentality is 
we we're going to use any knife, right? So that that's kind of the and in the movie, I, Tommy Lee Jones is making uh, out of flint a knife out of flint. So and uh, Benicio even carves out uh, uh, like a small stake and makes that sharp. Mm -hmm. even though you can only stab with it, but that's kind of like your makeshift knife. So it really goes into the mentality of, for us, we really don't care. If it's a blade, we're going to use it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and let me ask you this. Yes. Um, for you in a knife, what do you prefer? Like, do you look for something that's a good stabber or a good slasher? Uh, or both? Or it doesn't really matter? I mean... Um, Definitely, the art to me is very versatile. So uh, I like uh, a versatile knife. So if the knife is very, very specific towards only one grip and only slashing or only stabbing, I kind of prefer the ones that are more versatile. Mm, so you could right, use them right. in a bunch of different grips, uh, slashing and stabbing. Uh, you know, so I, I kind of prefer that way. But I try not to be too picky because once again I, I feel like the art you know tells us you got you should be able to use a three hundred dollar knife or a ten dollar knife you, you should exactly. be able to, yeah it, it's your skill is is what's important at the end of the day but yeah no I agree. I'm with you on that one um, one mind any weapon yeah yeah <laughs> so anyway uh man thank you for sharing us the, your uh, experience and insight into training at the uh, uh sayak kali style and uh you know once again thank you for being a guest uh, thank you very much like i said guys seek it out if you find it train it bring a notebook <laughs> all right so that's it for for today thank you all for joining us uh, Vampire over and out.